Welcome back to Hit Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mardu Legends. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. First things first, I have to give a massive thank you to John. I have been sick over the weekend, unfortunately. Caitlin came home. If you guys don't know, she's a school teacher. She came home with a bit of a stomach bug. I did catch it over the weekend, uh, and unfortunately, I've still not really been feeling 100%. Normally, it's like a 24-hour deal, uh, but thankfully, well, not so thankfully, uh, it's kind of been lasting a little bit longer. I've not been throwing up or anything still, but it's been like uh, just a problem. So. I do apologize I missed over the weekend, but thankfully, John, in all of his glory, came in clutch and was able to get a couple of gameplay videos up for you guys, which I hope you enjoyed. It looks like everybody did. So, John, as always, man, thank you so much for covering for me. Uh, John is absolutely amazing. You should go hang out with him on live stream. Uh, he does that quite a bit here on It Resolves. But uh, let's talk about today's deck. This is brought to you by Swayze. Uh, Swayze, if you don't know, fellow content creator, all around nice, fun guy always has just the most creative builds in my opinion i feel like if there's one word that i would use to describe swayze's builds it's certainly creative i feel like he goes for an idea and just does a great job of culminating a handful of cards some of which you would expect some of which you wouldn't expect uh and he just he makes it work and it's absolutely amazing to watch so swayze thank you so much man for sharing this list uh as always i appreciate you uh, this is Mardu for the sake of having Jaxus uh, essentially in the deck. Uh, Jaxus is a really cool card. So uh, three and a red for a two, three. You can pay one red, tap it, discard a card, create a token. That's a copy of another creature you control. It gains haste. And then when it dies, you draw a card, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. You can only do that as a sorcery, but essentially this is like blitzing your other cards, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the deck is very much built around just having a lot of legends. I I've practiced with well I've, I've done one game with this deck uh and what i was able to do quite easily was get a sadistic pilgrim pilgrim out get a jadar out uh and then basically just progress by throwing out a couple of threats every once in a while and then swinging in and gaining a little bit of life here and then draining the opponent uh when any of our stuff died and it worked really really well uh some not so maybe well-known inclusions this is actually kind of an interesting card it's braid's frightful return uh two and a black for a read ahead enchantment saga you can sacrifice a creature on one if you do each opponent discards a card what's nice is we do have that jadar uh to throw out those little two two decay zombie tokens which are fairly expendable uh and again if you do have the sadistic pilgrim down you're actually draining a life anyway uh and so you're kind of you know evening out the playing field a little bit uh on two you return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand which i think is just a really nice recursive piece obviously uh and then on three target opponent may sacrifice a non-land non-token permanent if they don't they lose two life and you draw a card which is just immediate like okay we kind of need to dig further into the deck this gives us that out to do that uh now as far as some removal pieces go we do have right of oblivion as well as braids braids being a really really big piece of this deck i feel like if you can sacrifice the permanent uh make the opponent hopefully sacrifice if not you just draw further into the deck it's great uh kaya is in here so creatures on plus one you control gain death touch until the end of the turn put a one one counter on up to one target non-token creature uh or excuse me target creature token you control uh, until the end of the turn, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, you actually create twice that many instead. And then on minus six, exile all cards from all graveyards and create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying for each card exiled this way. Now, I have played a game where I've been able, and I think it was on recording, I've been able to ultimate this Kaya. It is a game ender most of the time. Uh, absolutely lovely. Uh, what works really well is with this little guy, uh, whenever a legendary creature you control dies, you actually get a token copy of it, which is great because Kaya helps you kind of bolster those guys up. So it's actually a really nice little mini combo there, so to speak. We also have Lisa here, uh, Forgotten Archangel, which helps you bring stuff back as well. Uh, we do have a one of Junji and a one of Ao, and then of course three Shieldred, uh, which is just an absolute bomb in the mid game. Uh, we do have the Cruelty of Gix as well, which is kind of a nice little include. Uh, 
my, mostly for that minus three, being able to put a creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield is just absolutely amazing in a deck where everything is legendary, everything is good. It's just a solid, solid pick. So all that to say, guys, again, I've only played one game with this. We did win that game. I'm really excited to jump into it again. So let's go ahead. Let's do that. Let's see what we can do in game one. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. And yeah, I mean, honestly, I think this is a reasonable enough keep. We've got a nice two into three into four. We only need one more land and we've got the right of oblivion. Keeping in mind, guys, again, red is really only in the deck for the Jadar, uh, which just means you don't really have to push it and, and try and get Jadar or uh, try and get the red mana early. You can kind of bank on not necessarily needing it right away um i actually think we go for the sadistic pilgrim here versus the jadar uh this is a bit more of the greedy play but the reality is if we can get jadar down on top of that sadistic pilgrim we start to gain a lot of extra value uh and so it feels probably worthwhile to do that so we'll see uh, i'm assuming they remove this no oh Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's, hmm. That's a little scary. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I think we are okay this turn to go for just the pure Jadar play, uh, given that they can't really do anything too crazy yet. Uh, we might have to write of Oblivion this. What's kind of nice is I feel like we could probably write of Oblivion and then really get them at some point, but we'll see. We're going to borrow time. That's fine. Not great, of course, but it's not the end of the world. There is the Jadar, um, or Jaxus, excuse me, not Jadar, Jadar, wow. Um, let's go ahead and just throw out the Urborg here. I think this is fine. Uh, the reason being, again, if we, uh, if we do get one of our, you know, legendary creatures destroyed or whatever, uh, we actually just get it back. The only trick is we do know they have enchantment removal, so chances are that's going to be where they are at for the most part, but they are going to have to pay a ward cost if they want to get rid of this little guy, and, uh, that's kind of fine. Ah, tasty. I love coffee in the morning, guys. I can't tell you how important it is to have coffee in the morning. Um, okay. So, we do have some options. We can Cruelty of Gix, uh, which doesn't seem terrible, but I also don't know if it's great. Like, we don't have anything in the graveyard, you know? Um, we could... <laughs> that's a little tricksy. Um, so, we can... not <laughs> This is a little silly. Uh, but I kind of like it. We'll see if this works. This is such a dumb play. <laughs> this probably won't work, but we're going to try it. Uh, if they go for something, it's okay. We've got the plus one. Um, all right, let's see if this works. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm anticipating this not working at all. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the borrowed time here. Uh, and we're going to sacrifice this. <laughs> so we get two of these tokens now. Uh, and they're not legendary. Uh, and we get our Jadar back. <laughs> uh, this was an ambitious play, and I'm really surprised the opponent didn't do anything about it. Uh, I assume they have instant speed. Like, some kind of removal of some kind would be really important, but that's cool. Uh, we gained quite a bit of life off of that, which is great. We'll go ahead and attack with the Urborg. What's nice is, uh, again, that ward cost really staves off anything, like any Ganjo even, like they can't really do that. Uh, and now we've just got a much more ridiculous board. So at this point, yeah, they're either going to have to sweep or they're not going to do it. So awesome. That was great. Uh, I'm glad we went for the fun play. That was really cool. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. How do we feel about this hand? Um, I think okay knowing that we can blitz this. Um, I feel like that's kind of the only saving grace of this hand, but I think it's probably worth it to keep. Uh, generally, anytime you have three lands and some decent threats, like it's kind of hard to pass that up. Uh, and so I feel like this is probably okay. Um, I am just going to blitz this. And if they, you know, decide they want to block, that's fine. But we're going to try and uh, either get some damage in or trade. Either way, we draw a card. 
um, which is kind of what we want more so than anything else. Keeping in mind, we don't run mirror box, so uh, we can't really take advantage of having two of the same card on the field unless we let them die and we get a non to or a non legendary token out of the deal, uh, which is a little bit different. And unfortunately, we don't have the the setup for that this time, uh, at least not yet. So we'll see how things go. Uh, we do have Braids next turn. Alternatively, we just have Kaya, but of course Kaya is much better when we've actually got something on the field. Um, we'll see. Braids just seems so good in tandem with a number of other cards in the deck. Uh, let's try and just throw this out there. Uh, we're not going to do anything with it, I don't believe. Uh, we're not really in a great position to, if that makes sense. Like. At the moment, it's kind of just a 3-3. We could sacrifice a land, but that's really risky when they've got so many cards in hand that I just don't feel like it's worth it. It looks like they're just willing to go for it here anyway. And they did get rid of a Path of Peril to do it. That's kind of helpful, uh, to be honest. Kind of cool with that. Um, that I am not cool with. <laughs> that's terrifying. Um, hmm. I'm wondering, what is the option here? I mean, we next turn we have Cruelty of Gix, so we have ways to fight through. I, I, I think this is probably just the safest bet. Um, I'm not gonna blitz the Jaxus. Uh, I kind of want to see if maybe we can capitalize on that later. This is also representative of like an Infernal Grasp or something. Uh, ooh, okay, well, that sucks. Um, yeah, that's super good with Shieldred. <laughs> uh, not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just play a Shieldred. Uh, if they have another Infernal Grass, or uh, excuse me, uh, Invoke Despair, we're probably pretty dead. <laughs> but at least these cancel each other out. Yeah. Um, granted, we are so far behind in comparison, but that's fine. Okay, they are gonna attack in. I will take the block because we've got the cruelty of Gix. Um, and obviously we can't really afford to take extra damage. Sure, that's fine. There's always another Shieldred. I don't think I've ever faced an opponent and them not had, them not have had another, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and do this. We'll bring one back. I'll bring back their Shieldred, cause why not? Um, awesome. Uh, that was a bit of a stalemate couple turns. We lost two damage in that exchange. Um, was, I really like that these cancel each other out. I've never, I don't, I don't think I've ever been in a position where we've just had like two shieldreds on either side of the field. Um, yeah, I will block. Again, we can't risk the damage at this point. Four damage is a lot, uh, and that gets us an invoke. I mean, we're already in invoke range, but that definitely gets us an invoke range. Um... That's kind of interesting, uh, but I actually think, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably Elisa. Uh, we do really need to get some lifelink going here, uh, just to be able to kind of get ourselves out of range. And if they just don't have like anything too crazy in their hand, this is a way of getting back into the game. So while this is probably the most ambitious line, I think it's the best line. Uh, because we do really need to gain some life back and get out of that Invoke Despair range. If we can't, we are just done. Okay, sure. Uh, annoying, 100%, but not the end of the world. Um, yep. Alright, so let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, and let's do this. Whoops. Oh, creature token, duh. We don't have a creature token. I always get mixed up that this is a regular creature, not a creature token. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but that's fine. All right. Uh, so kind of curious to see what they actually go for here. I'm very scared. <laughs> uh, please don't kill everything. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, if they attack Kaya, I think we just let that happen, right? Like I'm not, they're not gonna attack Kaya. Do I care about this? Um, I'm gonna say no blocks. That's super risky. I'm not 100% sold on that. 
Um, really not sold on that, but I don't know that we've got like a better option, truthfully. Jadar. Okay, Jadar is something. Uh, so we can blitz this. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, I just cast it. No, I, I blitzed it. Okay, good. Ooh, I was a little worried. All right. Um, let's minus here. Um, yeah, I think this works out okay. Let's attack in with just Jaxus. Uh, yeah. They can... I don't really care. This is just kind of forcing them into it. Um, okay. I'm assuming they just block with, like, the underdog. Or they just take two. Like, it's two damage to them. It's not that important. And then we go here. Uh, so this is going to give us two two twos. And we're going to get two Jaxus tokens out of the deal. They might have a cut down. Yeah. Okay. That's fine, actually, because we now just get two of them, which gives us double the tokens. <laughs> and that's actually stronger. <laughs> that's really funny. Um, all right, sick. I mean, again, a really cool play. It's probably too little too late, but it is a really sick play. Um, <laughs> like, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. All right. This is the beauty of this little Urborg guy. I love this thing. It's so sick. Uh, especially with Kaya. Like, you do get crazy plays like this, which is just fun. Um, granted, I mean, we're not out of the woods at all, but <laughs> it's still really cool. We are out of, technically, a single invoke range. Um, that's not good. Now we're not out of range of invoke. <laughs> yep, there it is. Wow, that sucks. They just... That last card was invoked. Well done. I mean, hey, that was a really cool thing, uh, a really cool game. I do think we played okay. I don't think we played terribly there. I just think, you know, they had invoked despair and we can't really deal with it as well. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and jump into game three, guys. Let's see if we can get another win. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to keep. Um, again, don't really have to stress too much about not having red in the hand. Um, I do think that's something you want, obviously, at some point during the game, but we're not stressing about not having it. I think at this point it's it's fine. Uh, so this is actually a bit of an interesting choice uh, solely because we know they're mono red. I am going to try for the Sadistic Pilgrim. Um, let me explain this. So first and foremost, if we're against mono red, life gain obviously is always going to be good because it's going to get us out of range. So... Uh, ideally getting this down and then capitalizing on it, <coughs> excuse me, as best we can is always going to be better. However, providing two threats in a single card is actually really, really important when it comes to, uh, fighting mono red because they now have to have multiple avenues to kill multiple things. Now, keeping in mind the zombie here, and this is part of why I didn't go for this, has decayed, which means it can't block. Uh, which means it's not exactly all that exciting. <laughs> um, but it is some, something that they have to consider. And so it's just one of those things where you just kind of have to weigh your options. I think that's the better option. But I do anticipate the Pilgrim dying here. Yeah. But we gained some life out of the deal, which I'm happy with. And they killed Jadar. That's fine. All right. So they're going to get in for four. It's a lot of damage that we are going to have to consider. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's do this. We will throw a counter here, because why not? And we'll just go ahead and attack in. Basically, the hope here is that they just kill the Kaya. Um, that's actually more beneficial for us than anything else. Uh, next turn, we can get Lisa down, which is probably, like, not a game-ending kind of card, because they could just have enough burn to kill it, but, like... It's definitely a big swing in our favor from the standpoint of it does have lifelinks. So um, they're just going to play with fire us. They've only got two lands, which is worth noting. Uh, and it looks like they might just be digging for lands. So I'm not opposed to that. Um, yeah, it really looks like they're digging. Ah, squee. There they got it. That's good. Um, excellent. Okay. Yeah, so we literally, I think, just throw out Lisa. Unfortunately, I have to take a damage to do it. I don't like that, but that's fine. 
Uh, hopefully they just don't have, like, a lightning strike would suck. Uh, they are going to attack with everything. I do think we take the block because we can bring back the Lisa with the Cruelty of Gix. Uh, yep, they've got lightning strike. But again, keeping in mind, we just mitigated all the damage and killed a creature and burned a card in hand. Uh, so, what we are going to do is jump ahead. Let's get Lisa back. Oh, it's from the opponent's graveyard. Oh, man. It's only the opponent's graveyard? Oh, jeez. That sucks. <laughs> Uh, I'm also not playing a Ganjo because it can kill stuff. Um, from a graveyard. Did this... It exiled it. Oh my gosh. Should have blocked the epic here. No, that was dumb. That was really dumb. Uh, that's fine. I am going to take the block here because we just kind of have to. Um, uh, that was terrible. All right, let's do this. That was just a misplay on my end. Uh, we're doing this so we can eat Ganjo. Um, and hopefully get rid of this little Stormseeker fella. Or that. Holy crap. Yeah, definitely that. Okay. Uh, so we have to live. <laughs> definitely kill that. 100%. Uh, let's block here. Do this and attack in because this can't block. Uh, and basically we're dead. Like, that was a bit of a misplay on my end. Uh, what we should have done, by the way, guys, is we should have blocked the, uh, Valderan Epic here. So if we had done that, yeah, they got us here. Good game. Uh, if we had done that, we would have been able to survive that, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this one up, guys. We're running up on time, and I do want to get ahead on recording a little bit. So let's make sure we have a chance to talk about this. All right, so uh, first and foremost, as always, Swayze, my man, thank you so much for sharing this list. This was an absolute blast to play. I misplayed in that last game. I think we could have done a lot more had we played much more correctly. So I think that last game is 100% on me. Uh, as far as the other two games, I think we played reasonably well. The first one, we obviously were able to win off of a fairly greedy play, but hey, I'll take it. I like the greedy plays. Uh, the second game, I think we were going to run into, uh, like uh, they had Invoke Despair and we just didn't have enough stuff uh, to, to sacrifice to the Invoke Despair to really make it worth it. Uh, and we didn't take over the game quick enough, which I think we were able to do in that first game. So uh, I think that was just a matter of circumstance. I don't think we necessarily played super poorly, though I'm sure we could have done better, and I'm sure you lovely folks in the comments will let me know. Uh, as far as that last game goes, again, I think we could have saved it uh, if we had gotten that Lisa back. Uh, just because I don't know that they had enough burn in hand, it didn't seem like it at least, to be able to deal with it again. Uh, which means we would have been able to freely block something or they would have probably just not attacked and we would have been able to start gaining some life or at least giving ourselves a little bit of time to spread out our board and make it much more difficult for them to win. Uh, and so that was just a, a dumb block on my end. Uh, regardless, I think this deck is really, really fun. I've been really enjoying a lot of these legend style decks uh, because there's so much support right now, right? Like Dominaria obviously brought a lot of legends into the, the fray. We're getting a lot more with the Brothers War. And so this feels like an archetype or a style of deck that we're going to be able to see for a few months now, at least, uh, if not much longer. And so I'm really excited to see how this pans out with the new Brothers War set coming in a couple weeks. Uh, it should be a blast. So I hope you guys enjoyed this again, Swayze. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to play one of your decks because I do feel like that creativity aspect is just so strong. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It's great to be back. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I will hopefully see you tomorrow, assuming I don't get sick again. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more gameplay for you guys. So thank you all very much. I love you. Have a fantastic day.